guys welcome back to our vegan kitchen we've got a very special recipe for you today it is for the most decadent the most delicious rich delicious 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 chocolate cake you've ever had with a sweet potato in it or without a sweet potato in it this is really something special so let's start with the sweet potato today I'm using a purple yam but you could also use an orange sweet potato. The only thing that you have to make sure is that it is peeled, cooked, and either orange or purple. <laughs> so like I said, I used the purple one. I cooked this in the microwave. I waited for it to cool a little bit and just peeled the skin off. However, you could roast it. I wouldn't recommend that. It's summertime, it's a pain in the neck. Just put it in the microwave or peel it and then uh, cube it up and put it on the stove in a pot of water until it's tender. So we're going to take one cup of sweet potato and put it in our blender. And we're also going to add a cup of water because um, it's gonna be really difficult to blend that without it being wet. So we're putting all of our wet ingredients in here right now so that it's easy to blend. <laughs> this is always so hard to open. All of the ingredient measurements will be in the info box below, so don't worry about not getting it all down. What was that? That was vanilla. Okay. <laughs> We're also going to add a little bit of uh, apple cider vinegar because that's going to help activate the baking soda and the baking powder. We're going to go over to the blender and we're going to blend. Now you want to make sure this is super smooth. I'm going to put it on auto blend first and then whatever else needs to be done I'm just going to pulse it. All right. That looks beautiful. The color is unbelievable. This is like Barney the dinosaur chocolate cake, but it's not gonna taste like Barney. <laughs> all right. How do so, you know what Barney tastes like? He could be cake flavored. He could be. So I've got all of my dry ingredients here. You could totally make this gluten-free if you wanted to. Just use gluten-free flour blend, but I've got regular flour. I've got my Lakanto uh, monk fruit sugar substitute, which is zero calories and zero glycemic load. You could also use regular sugar if you don't have the monk fruit one. It's, it's up same to you. amount. It's one for one. I've got some raw cacao powder, some vegan chocolate chips, mini. They don't have to be mini. If you only have like a candy bar or something, you could just crunch it up with a fork or just slice it up with a knife and put it in, but it's the same amount. A little pinch of sea salt, some baking powder, and some baking soda. So the first thing I'm going to do is mix all of my dry ingredients together. Also, if you're using, that's what, I just remembered what I wanted to say from before. If you're using a purple sweet, they're not as sweet as the orange. So add two tablespoons more of the sugar if you're using the purple. If you're using the orange, just do the recipe as it's written. So once I get this all mixed pre-mixed up together I'm just gonna follow simple math here and add the wet to the dry and we're all done we just have to bake it I love that color right now but too bad that color is gonna go away because it's all just gonna be brown yeah all right it's gonna take just a couple seconds here to scrape all of this out all right so I'm just gonna mix it up it's gonna be pretty thick whoops <laughs> no dumpies yeah it's a little sloppy. Okay, so it's going to be pretty thick. This is the part where I like to adjust the recipe. This is way too thick. So I like to add a little bit of seltzer water mm. just to bring it up to the right consistency. Right. I find the seltzer water really helps also give it some volume and help activate the baking soda and the baking powder. It's a fun little trick. Right? So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take some of my seltzer water on here. <laughs> That's probably three tablespoons, maybe. And what flavor are we using here? Ooh, mango! Whoa. Nice. Probably just a little bit more. Especially if you're using the purple yam, it really tends to suck all of the water out of the uh, mixture. It smells so good, too. Why, thank you. Make sure you get it mixed thoroughly, but don't overmix it. 
because the flour is going to make it tough then because you're activating the gluten. So mix it just enough so that you get all of the dry patches out of there. I've got my already greased 8 inch cake pan and I'm just going to spread it into the cake pan evenly. This is really going to bake up into a beautiful, moist, spongy cake. All right, this is ready to go in, but got to give it a little tap tap. Make sure we got everything level. This is going in at 350 for exactly 22 minutes. Bye, be delicious. The cake is out of the oven. I repeat, the cake is out of the Looking oven. Good. It's cooled. I tipped it out right onto the plate, no problem. It is so moist and decadent, I cannot wait to tear into that later. I can't wait to put a tear into that. So now we're gonna make a ganache to go over the top. We had um, frosting over it the other day. You could totally just buy a store-bought frosting and use like half of a tub. It would be great. You can make some sort of a peanut butter drizzle or something if you wanted, like a funny bone. So the ganache is very simple. We've got some raw cacao powder some more of the Lakanto uh, monk fruit. We're gonna throw in a little bit of vanilla and a pinch of salt. And the only other ingredient is the coconut oil and I like to use this for the ganache because when it's refrigerated, it's going to be firm. And then when you take it out to room temperature, it's gonna be a little bit soft especially in the summertime, because everybody knows coconut oil above 70 something degrees is a liquid. So we're gonna mix our coconut oil in. You could actually have this with nothing on top if you wanted, or just some fresh fruit if you're like trying to be healthy. But it is Sunday today, and uh, we want a little something special. So I'm just gonna give this a good mix till it's completely engulfed. And then we're gonna drizzle it over the top and put it in the fridge to set up. Whoa, isn't that pretty? Mm -hmm. So now we're just gonna drizzle it over the top. Oh my God, it's like soaking in. That is amazing. Of course, let it drip down the sides. <laughs> Could that not be more beautiful? It's beautiful. Just let it dribble all around. So here we are at dinner, well actually dessert, Mark is cutting the cake and it is so moist and it holds together so well. Granny could not stop saying how moist it was. Yeah, she had two pieces. After everybody left, she was like, do you think I could have another piece of that? <laughs> that is pretty rare. So this is what's left over. It is just so beautiful. The only thing I would change about this is I would have tried to dissolve the sugar a little bit more. I didn't want to use the icing sugar because I wanted to use the um, zero glycemic sugar, but you know what? I'm thinking you could totally do a nice peanut butter ganache. Yeah, you could do any topping you want. And the peanut butter ganache would make it like a funny bone, right? Yum. Oh my God, that is just too much for my heart. Okay, so this is a total winner. This is a showstopper. You bring this to any uh, family function, any uh, Sunday dinner, any weeknight dinner. They're gonna you, love it. You will be a hero, not a villain. All right, so that's that. I really hope you guys give it a try. It's super simple. It's much healthier than a regular cake that tastes this good. And it doesn't give you that lardy feeling in your mouth after you eat it. It tastes clean. So give it a shot. Thumbs up for a great recipe. Subscribe for more. And until next time, much love.